put off by how long this video is, don't worry, I try to jam pack my videos with as much content and as much detail as I possibly can. Anything I feel I can comment on and that I feel you might be interested in, I pretty much put in the video. I try not to repeat myself and talk fairly fast. If the video is too long for you, I have recorded a shorter version and the link will be in the description box. Rack Video Game Review. The year is 2052. Humanity has discovered a source of an infinite source of resources, the dark matter reactor. And as such, war between human beings has ended because, you know, resources, you know, it's, it was never really about land, faith, ethnicity, it was always about resources. Thus, the military has been dismantled gradually, and when the story here starts, when we join it, the very last of the military has been dismantled, and Cain, a racketeer, which I'm pretty sure racking basically means, you know, racking up points, so yeah, I guess he was just, I don't know, special forces or something running around gunning people. I don't think the, the story is really supposed to make sense so, so much as just allow for the concept. It's, it's very intentionally just it's kind of superficial and thin. Dumb, even. And with, with very clunky exposition and, yes. Anyway, Cain is certain that something bad will happen, and he's right. The humanoid and lizard-like Arcturan aliens, and this is where I could make a joke about how, you know, the gender binary doesn't necessarily, you know, if, if you were to engage in sexual activity with an Arcturan, yes, they intend to steal the dark matter reactor and you have to stop them and there's also you know i've i've read that some say you know they're trying to conquer the world really they're they're basically just you know they they have sort of an invading force but they're really just there for the dark matter reactor and yeah that's that's Pretty much it. Straightforward. Good guys, bad guys. Big guns. You are in radio contact with Starlin, a steel-working not-girlfriend, although she seems to think, you know, she is. And the engineer who built the sword for you. And he likes to tease with how the two of you are boyfriend girlfriend how his hair is fantastic and how he is awesome and you will trade insults with exo not an arcturan i'm, I'm not entirely sure if, i mean he looks like a person he, he looks like a human being so he might be but yeah he designed the robots for the aliens and he has an R2-D2 knockoff that he will argue with slightly and it's of course the kind of thing where he you know it will beep boop and we don't know what it just said so he literally says no of course you know not and and he just repeats what it just said so that kind of thing yes This is a first-person shooter and a classic old-school kind of type of shooter rather than, you know, these modern ones. And, yeah, it's it's very similar to, like, Doom, Mega Man. Some, some say it's like first-person shooter Mega Man. Actually, I think, like, a, 
big developer said that it was like a first person shooter Mega Man. But yeah, you know, Doom, Mega Man, Quake, and you know, just to give my background, I have played the first two Doom games, Mega Man 2 and Quake 1 through 3. And like others have said, you Overall, you maybe just want to play one of those instead. You know, they, they are more fun, memorable, varied. Nevertheless, and I sh should maybe say that... I hope that doesn't distract too much of weather and, you know, doorbells. I don't like doorbells. The, the cutscenes are also nice and, and classic. Dialogue boxes, where every time, you know, you, you have to press space, you know, jump to move from one to the next. So, you know, one, when you've read the entire thing, you can go and you can skip these entirely with, with escape if you want to. And when, you know, when you're not in a level, they also have these simple cartoon stills that show the, the scene, as it were. But yeah, completely old school, there's no voice acting here. The, the, there might be like sound effects and music and such, but yeah, very old school, very cool. And, you know, you can increase your... Or, well, yeah, you can increase your max, you know, health, and you can also go beyond your max health through, for example, small life pick, you know, small health pickups. And there are there are a lot of mini bosses in this, and they, you know, there may be like bosses that you fought earlier that just you know reappear. And the, you know, the bosses are very Mega Man style. It's, they're apparently also like Castlevania. I have not played Castlevania. It's, yeah, it just hasn't really gone that way. Mo most of the games I played in the 90s were ones that, you know, other people happen to have or the like. I, I didn't really buy a lot of games back then the, the way I do now. So... Yeah, I, you know, but it, from what I do know about Castlevania, I, I would agree. It, it does seem like they're, they're very similar. And yeah, the classic, you know, style of bosses, you have to learn, you know, you, yeah, you have to learn the pattern that they're going to take, you know, they're, they're going to attack in certain ways and at certain times and you can maybe read you know okay now he's going to do that attack so i gotta evade it in this way because it's it's not just you know oh i'll just walk far enough away or i'll jump or i'll duck it's yeah and you know you also have to figure out how to you know when to attack how to attack and they are all fun distinct intense you know, the bosses themselves and the battles, and just, yeah, you know, you'll be jumping, ducking, running around. Don't take your eyes off them, if at all possible. Like, let's say you have to run away from the boss for, you know, maybe he has a certain ranged attack, and you have to run away from him. Back up. Don't turn around and run, because, yeah. It, it'll be extremely dangerous to, to do so. And, you know, whenever possible, shoot him. Because it might take a lot to take him down fully. So, yeah. Now, the... I, like I already said, there, there are a number of mini-bosses. And they tend to be, you know... A boss you've maybe earlier fought as a as an overall boss or the like, and I mean, how often could they be? I mean, it's they're they're not gonna show up in like an entire group. They're they're certainly not gonna do like splash damage independently of each other. 
you know, and and for sure this isn't gonna happen like several times in a single level. Yeah, d d bring your A game. It's you, you're gonna need it. The extra modes are, you know, allow for, you know, leaderboards. So yeah, you can compare it to anyone around the world, and yeah, they're a little underwhelming overall. It's they're not really that different from the normal modes. They're essentially to make it more more straightforward for speedrunners and those who replay levels a ton of times to max out the score. The these modes are time attack, which you know, when you hear that name you maybe think, what, like, you know, New York Minute, as in, you know, the Max Payne trilogy. Yes, I finally accepted that it's that there are three games. It's it's pretty much the same and it just yeah it counts the the amount of time you you take to complete yeah yeah and then there's score attack which doesn't count your points in a you know particularly in in a very different way. again max pain max pain 3 has a mode where you're basically every so often you're given a new challenge and you you know something as you know kill so and so many enemies within a certain amount of time for example that's really cool that's that's something where i mean as much as i dislike max pain 3 and find that it's way too short of a game it really does give you reasons to replay the the overall campaign in these other modes because they do genuinely play differently you you approach them in a completely different way you know in addition to difficulty settings which this one does have as well and yeah it's just it's a little you know underwhelming and then there's you know quick play which is basically the same as normal i i thought that it maybe would just be i mean the part of score attack is basically that you don't have to skip dialogue stuff and you know that of course may you know that means you never have to the the game never really pauses for you to read story the way that it which is not you know it's not a bad thing that it does that in the campaign but when you're just replaying a level over and over to try and max out your score you don't really want to have to you know skip through dialogue boxes every so it just yeah but yeah quick play it's more or less the same as normal basically it allows you to pick your starting level including the the hidden bonus level and yeah, it's you know, and and it allows you to play. You know, it's it's the only of these additional modes that you can play with mods. You know, you can play the campaign, and you can play quick play with mods. The you know the others don't allow mods, and the as some examples of what I m might think would be cool, the House of the Dead. They have boss mode as a you know as an additional mode, where yeah it's almost self-explanatory. You fight all the bosses in the game in a you know yeah in in the order that they appear in, in the levels without you having to play through. Again, the levels themselves are a lot of fun, but it would be really cool to get to play just against the boss enemies. And just like in a row like that. Also because in the House of the Dead, you might only have the the one like overall life. So if you end up dying, even on like the second to last boss, or even if as you're com as you're defeating the last boss, you die just you know you didn't quite make it. 
gotta start over, gotta do the whole thing, you know, and that's, that's nice and challenging, and that is a fun way to play it, and given how awesome the bosses are in this, I, it would really have been great to have that mode, and, you know, while this does count points for, you know, how much damage you do in a certain amount of time and, and such, the racking in, in the House of the Dead overkill, it's, there's, there's a certain counter, especially for don't miss and basically, I, it's been too long since I last played it, but I want to say that it also, like, the more damage you do, like, the, the less shots you have to use, the better, you know, yeah, the, the more, if I recall, it's like, it's, it's a, it's a double up bonus kind of thing, so, you know, as you get more and more, you know, it'll, like, you know, twice the amount of points that you're earning is what you'll eventually get, you know, five times, and so on and so forth, and again, makes it really cool for replayable, and I think that that would have been a good way to do the racking up in this. I'll, I'll get more into that. Anyway, you, I already mentioned you can't play these modes with mods. Again, quick play and the campaign are essentially the same. Quick play just allows you to pick a starting level. I'm really glad that quick play is there. It's, it's really a, a great idea. You also cannot play, you know, time attack and score attack with mod levels. Now, the levels are quite, you know, quickly completed, so, you know, there are eight regular levels, and then the ninth, you know, bonus level, it took me about, you know, the, the in-game counter said two hours, you know, I, by my count, it's more like three and a half, but, yeah, you know, so, and, and, uh, yeah, a bunch of them, it is, like, 15 minutes, some are only 10. You know, some of them do get to half an hour and so, but, yeah, a bunch of them, you can just run straight through them. So, you know, that, that makes them optimal for just replaying over and over, you know, for anyone who wants that. And it's just, uh, that's, that's something you really want to do when part of your appeal is you can replay this over and over and then compare how well you do in you know in my hitman Ops absolution review i rather rightly criticized it for having small cramped levels however that does really work for when you're when you're creating your own contract where you, you know choose what target, what to wear, what to use, so on and so forth, and then pl people play those over and over to try to, you know, do better than anyone else on that. Yeah, you'll you'll really want to do that kind of thing. And yeah, I mean, even on the the first try, you'll it it won't be, you know, you'll you'll have an easy time of. And I mean the the times I just gave fifteen minutes, half an hour, or so that was on the first try. If I played them over, you know, knowing exactly where to go and you know, knowing exactly where enemies are and such, yeah, I I could you know, that's that's what speedrunning is for. You know, you shave off time from, from that. And the you know and it does also work for the the normal mode it's again yeah when when we played first person shooters in the 90s you could run through levels real real quick and you know a bunch of the time not all of the time and as such yeah it it you know it made for really intense gameplay now Others have pointed out you really do miss a multiplayer mode. This comes with a level editor and, you know, a number of mods. You know, it has full workshop support and that really works great. There's... 
I think it was around 17 maps total. It's a little weird when you're counting because some of them, you know, you download and say it's like map, but it's really mainly for other developers to, you know, to make maps out of and such. But yeah, I believe my final count came to 17, 12 of which are good. And honestly, the rest, there's not really a single bad level for this. It's just that the remaining five are really just for fun and, you know, or practice or the like. And yeah, and, and I mean, seriously, the work in progress ones, yeah, those are still real good. It's, you know, yeah, I had every single level that is more than, you know, just for fun or just a single room or something like that is a really good level. And mods, the, the count with this got really complicated also, but I believe the, the complete count came to about 31, and four of those are actual levels. You, you know, it's, th those are the two different ways that you can play levels in this, is that they'll show up as, you know, under maps, or they'll be mods, and mods, you just go in, you, you know, you say, I want to activate that mod, and then the level appears when you've done so. And, of course, some have chosen to do tributes to classic first-person shooters, and as such, the full first level of Wolfenstein 3D, although it's done with rack textures, so it doesn't, you know, it doesn't have the, or in part with those, so it doesn't have like the the, you know, the Nazi imagery and such. It it's actually almost like playing a German version of the game. Yeah, and the entire first level of Quake, and with Doom. It's not just like the first level, it's not just the first couple of levels. It's the entire first campaign completely faithfully recreated. I do wish that. I hate to be that guy, so, you know, I'm not the first to point it out, but because it's so faithful, there are a few issues with like the AI doesn't quite behave like it doesn't do, you know, enemies that might start out at the top of a platform might, in this, walk off that platform because they're they're trying to approach you and such, which they wouldn't do in Doom. And the racking, you know, the, the rack gameplay doesn't really work that well for it. They're just, yeah, you know, Doom wasn't made with a with racking system, so yeah. And uh, yeah, some, some of the mods are just material for other modders you know, not only mapping-wise. And, yeah, the mods, you know, change difficulty, the, you know, sounds, the the overall look. There, there's, there are at least two that just straight up change color, you know, like they might extract most of the color and then just really highlight, you know, excuse me, like primary colors and such. And, yeah, great work. It really, it's it's really cool. I, I think one of them is actually just straight up black and white, and it's like you know Sin City or and and you know Blood is of course still nice and red, you know Sin City or you know, Mad World or something. It, it, I really do love that Mad World is both the title of this insane over the top. You've got a chainsaw for an arm or for a hand rather you know, just beat him up, brutal, you know, game, and this really somber, sad, you know, song that just, yeah, you know, ab about, you know, moving to a new school, and so I, I, I that's, that's a, a special kind of, of really messed up. And, and these, you know, color mods, they're not straining on the eyes, and, and neither is the, the main game. So, yeah, and that's, that sometimes really happens with this kind of thing. So, and they might change the effects of weapons, 
you know one makes your pistol like really really fast and you know they might change the AI and the you know or the the speed some some speed up the gameplay even more than it already is and the the AI one might you know the AI in this if they they there is friendly fire and if one of them hurts another they might start fighting you know each other instead one of the mods makes you know i think it's called no tolerance if any enemy accidentally harms another you know if one arturan or whatever harms another they're going to fight to the death they have no yeah no tolerance for that kind of, you know they they have not even a single yeah, the the so so they this it's really you know and I think the the description even says not balanced or anything but fun to watch and it is it is a lot of fun to watch and you know one adds a triple explosion grenade launcher that you get when you pick up the rocket launcher and yeah it's 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 pretty insane and and really really cool and again some of these mods are like the maps are just you know for fun or you know simple and such and some of these modded levels I, I should mention that the modded levels are a lot more varied than the main levels and I'm really glad for that because it in part shows that the the engine is perfectly equipped for more varied levels and it's yeah it's it's a lot more fun i i can see people you know if you're not speed running if you're not replaying for you know maxing out your score and such you might replay the the mod levels far more and yeah they they've done great work on those Again, the the overall the main levels are really good, but just yeah, I'll I'll get more into those. And yeah, some some of these levels end in just these. Some of them start in just these insane, cool OTT fights with like a ton of bosses at once, or like and or a ton of you know other you know high level enemies and such. Yeah. And you cannot load a save game with a mod that you didn't save the game using. And you, you know, you you can't save in the mod levels and such. But you know, there there are checkpoints in the the larger ones mostly. And yeah, it's you know, I'll get more into that how that works. Now, I've already mentioned in other videos that gameplay is one of the single most important parts of a game to me, and with with something like this, also where it really is mainly the gameplay, you know, not really story, characters, you know, such. As others have pointed out, the the gameplay can be kind of boring, almost like a chore, the action gets really repetitive. Now, you can jump and crouch and move to all sides, so, you know, get to strafe running, get to circle strafing, and that's that's it, you know, and, and activating switches and such, but there's nothing else, there's no cover system, there's no, yeah, and, you know, or, or like special abilities that you can, uh, yeah. Now the the running and jumping is kind of floaty and bouncy, and weapons can affect the camera, but you can also, yeah, you know, you you can adjust or even turn that turn off that, and it's not necessarily very often a good idea to be standing still in the game. the The graphics are this kind of cell shaded, and you know, in some of the mods you're supposed to see, you know, like a red sky and such, but that varies. Again, yeah, it looks looks really great. Doesn't strain the eyes. 
there are no less than 42 different crosshairs to choose from in this and one includes the the predator you know kind of the the unconnected three lines of the the triangle you know there are horizontal ones vertical ones circles dots squares you name it and some mods also add others the instrumental score is great it's really fast techno dance kind of thing Now this is a first person shooter but it does have some platforming elements and simple puzzles and that's you know in part where kind of the Mega Man things comes more into it and maybe also Castlevania from again from what little I know and you know you have lives and you can earn more you can pick up you know five points of course you can pick up extra lives and when you die, not if, you will respawn at the most recent checkpoint and it's, you know, it you you, you have the, the same guns, at least that you picked up in the level as you died with and, you know, if you run out of lives completely, you will respawn at the start of that level. And it'll, it'll autosave at the start of any given level and you can you know and it has four slots total so you know if you're spent if you're playing different levels at the same t yeah it's gonna allow for that you're not screwed and you can quick save although that has only one slot and uh, yeah you can quick save in the quick play as well like I said not in the mods and I don't think, I didn't really try it with the other two modes, but I doubt it, and it's not really, yeah, it's not really, those modes aren't really for the, the whole, yeah, and you know, depending on the difficulty you choose, you may be able to engage in safe scumming, and yeah, the, the quick saving, you can basically use at any point, you know, in the middle of a boss fight before or after certain challenges and such and yeah and again it depends on the difficulty setting you choose and it's 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 basically up to you how often you want to again depending on the difficulty and yeah there are five total and you start with four the the fifth one you have to unlock by playing the the you know penultimate one and yeah, whether you're a new or a vet, you can play this and be challenged by it. You know, trust me. If if you're like, you know, if you want to see if just like the easiest difficulty settings, like ah, I bet it's not gonna challenge me at all. Like, I personally I hate when games don't challenge you on the easiest because some people are gonna play it on the easiest because they're maybe not that experienced yet. That doesn't mean they don't. If you don't want to challenge. Don't play a video game, but the, diff the the fact that there's more than one difficulty setting means that it allows for people of different skill sets, different skill levels, to play it without having to, you know, without getting frustrated or feeling like it's way too easy. Trust me, even the easiest difficulty setting will challenge you. You cannot sleepwalk through this entire game. And on the higher difficulty settings, it gets pretty insane. So again, yeah, old school. And the the very easiest uh, enables a cheat menu, which you know I I quite like that it's in place of like codes and such. And you know some people are gonna want and and again you can use these as much or as little as you want. Although if I recall the the cheats that you complete one level with, you start the next level with those set. You you can't turn those off or turn others on. As far as I, yeah. Now the, yeah, the the cheats and at least two of these start, you know, default to on, but you can turn them off right after starting the level. You know, there's invulnerability, flight mode, no clipping. 
the you know infinite ammo of course that one defaults to on there's you know freezing everything which is not only enemies but also projectiles of yeah and you know enemy setting enemies to ignoring you always gib that one defaults to on and you know one that enables like finishers I think it's more or less all the time I didn't use that you know I didn't try that one out too much and there's a you know a gallery that you know you can unlock stuff for again you know yeah actually this is when I get into the kind of replayability you know there's the unlockable one there, there are these difficulty settings these cheats the the various mods and such there is there isn't the kind of randomization I I bring this up a lot I I don't expect that many games to have it but I do think the fact that it's in at least one game the the 99 version of Alien vs. Predator. That means that others theoretically should be able to do this. That kind of randomization isn't in this and isn't in that many games, but that really just, you know, it takes replayability and sets, you know, gets it up to 11. It's, it's pretty ridiculous. I, I can understand why, you know, for online kind of stuff, it might not be fair for the, for there to be randomization such but yeah basically in alien versus predator say you're fighting aliens a certain area might have three regular aliens or a single predator praetorian or no the pred alien isn't that common in the first one but now that it's hugely common in the other anyway yeah one Praetorian because that more or less evens out in how dangerous and how yeah and yeah this goes for all three species no matter who you what you're playing as what you're fighting you know play a level ten times you may well have ten different setups and keep in mind you don't know until you see the enemy what you're facing you know a a couple of like pulse rifle wielding marines might instead be a smart gun wielding marine or a couple of you know unarmed or barely armed civilians might become a single pulse rifle marine that kind of thing and you don't know what you're facing until you are facing it and by then you really have to be ready to just attack and it just it's so intense and it makes replaying them so much fun I I have no idea how many times I've played my way through Alien vs Predator but I can tell you that I've completed it several times including on all four difficulty settings and you know there are there are bonus levels to unlock in that and you only unlock them by playing on a you know there there are I believe five for each and if you complete actually is it only three difficulties anyway anyway if you you know if you complete it on like one of the easy you know ones you'll only unlock a single one. And you you can see the ones you unlock and it'll just say you know the second to highest you'll unlock three and the very highest you'll unlock five. Now that sounds simple. I mean you just you play through a game and then you the very last level you beat on the highest difficulty, right? Wrong. You can't play a level on a difficulty setting that you didn't beat the previous level on. End of discussion. So you have to play through the entire game if you want all bonus levels. And add to that the randomization and you know the gold version lets you save. The original did not and for a long time I didn't have the gold version you know it was released on you know via GOG.com recently recently and you know 
yeah, so so I have it now, but the original did not allow it, and that was, I really think that's the way to play it. You know, again, unless it's going to, like, frustrate the crap out of you, that really is the way to play it. You know, if you have the gold version, just don't save. You know, try not, yeah. The enemies include these aliens, you know, lizard, humanoid lizard aliens, cyborgs, you know, robots and, and such, you know, some of them are humanoid in overall, you know, and then there are also these spider robots that, you know, you may be able to jump over and sometimes you'll, you'll have to. Some enemies fly in, you know, it might be in a set pattern, like, you know, maybe they have a specific route that they fly, or maybe they just go side to side, or up and down, you know, varies, you know, and they can be a bit harder to hit, and, you know, especially if you use projectiles that don't hit the moment you fire, and, yeah. Enemies attack with, you know, shooting you, or they attack close up, they, you know, they attack kamikaze, and, yeah, the, the, you know, some fire heat-seeking projectiles, which do, in fact, turn corners. Or they, they, they can. There's, there's maybe some tricks, but, yeah. And, you know, one enemy weapon is with a railgun, which completely bypasses your armor and eats away at your health, and, yeah. And any enemy can attack you from close up, so, which, which you can, you know, that both means that you're not safe just by running up to, you know, if, if it's an enemy that only attacks at range, you know, running up to them might be safer than being very far away from them, but here it means that they're gonna attack. At the same time, if you time it right, you can, you know, you can do a close attack before they do theirs, or you can maybe get close to them, lure them to attack, run just far enough away that they can't hit you, and then you attack them with a projectile, yeah. The, the, basically, you have to always be very aware of how many enemies, what types of enemies, where they are, and be, be ready to, to fight them, and be ready to, like, run around between them, maybe put some distance between certain ones while getting close to others, and such. And again, you don't get to run away. There's no such thing as running away from enemies. You can just position yourself in a place that's easier for you to fight them off from, but there's no real, yeah. Again, old school first person shooter. And the you know the the AI itself is excuse me is is fine it's not amazing but yeah and you know the the enemies were quite well animated some enemies might quote unquote hide as you enter like if you go into a room they might have been just off to the sides of the entrance to the room so you didn't see them but suddenly they're behind you and you know some will spawn in a room sometimes you know, especially if you're, like, getting to a certain point in the room, or maybe just the moment you entered it, and there might be more than one, you know, pack of them to spawn, maybe several, several packs will, will spawn all at once, and, you know, this, and you may just have been locked into that room, you know, not not able to leave it before you've killed them all. So, yeah. You can carry every weapon in the game at the same time and you never have to reload them. You know, the the ammo might be somewhat limited both carry capacity and the supply supplies you find, so you will have to conserve 
your, your ammo, you know, use it at the right times and such. You have a hyper blade, a large teal sword. I, I mean large, not just like really long. It's just, yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty ridiculous, but it's really badass. And it can one hit kill most non boss enemies. So, yeah, and it does area effects. You can kill like four or more with a single swing if they're close enough. And yeah, it. You know, it swings slowly, and there's only one type of swing, and it can do a ton of damage to a boss enemy. If you can get close to that boss, and if you actually want to get close enough to that boss, you may not really be that interested in getting that close. And, you know, others have pointed out it's very quick, like pickups and gunplay. And, you know, there could be more weapons, and they could certainly also be more interesting, interestingly designed and such. They're, they're very straightforward. It's basically a pistol, which is incredibly accurate, even at very long ranges. A shotgun, which you have to cock per, for every shot. A plasma rifle with, you know, the, the plasma arcing over a distance and a rocket launcher where you have to you know put a new rocket in for every shot and you know the you can sometimes stun lock enemies if you do a lot of damage or maybe they're already like almost dying and such but it's it's not super common otherwise and you do get all these weapons very early on there's no real build up and yeah. You will have to use all of them, though, to properly get through it. Again, in part because of the, the ammo limitation, but also they're, they're, they're all good for very different situations. Again, the pistol is great for range. The shotgun is great for up-close damage. Rocket, it does a lot of, you know, aerial damage. And the, the plasma rifle is pretty insanely fast. You can you can run out of ammo for it really quickly, but it's also incredibly useful for, you know, hypothetically, let's say you just got the boss to lower his guard for a second, pound him with that thing, you know. Yeah. But yeah, it it's it's not a very high number, and they're just they're not super interesting looking again just like I said earlier you know playing some of the more classic ones I, I don't remember which quake or maybe it's you know more than one of them it's it's been a while there's a literal nail gun like and doesn't it isn't it like automatic or something there's there's an automatic nail gun in that you know do Duke Nukem 3D has a multi-barrel machine gun, you know, man, you know, personally held, like, not, not, you know, like, assault rifle or SMG, no, no, a machine gun, and just, yeah, it's, it's, it could easily be a lot more interesting for that, and I'm not saying that every first-person shooter has to beat those, I'm saying when you make a first-person shooter that really evokes memories of those, you really should be able to compete better with them. And, you know, some someone pointed out the, the guns are basically like pea shooters or cardboard guns, they're too weak, and you end up using the sword a lot to just, you know, yeah, to, to take them all out. And there's very nice gibbing in this, and if you stand perfectly still, Kane will, like, play around with the guns, like, you know, spin them on his finger and stuff like that. The game allows you to combo, you know, kill more than one enemy at once, and you rack up points, this very arcade style thing of killing, you know, it, it's a kill chain basically, and 
if you yeah if you get a long enough kill chain you earn a finisher which is great for killing a group of enemies and sometimes this will happen close enough to a mini boss that you can use it on them I, I read that in the like I think it's the the steam description kind of thing with like you know use it to take down a lot of enemies or even bosses you could do that but you know you could have done that with this game but you I don't know I I didn't play it on all difficulty settings maybe some of the you know especially high ones have more enemies near bosses or something but it I didn't run into it an awful lot now there are four levels of finishers for each weapon they are I I should maybe note, you know, I I do realize in my criticism of this that this is an indie, and you know, I'm I'm not hold and and it's also you know inexpensive, so I'm not holding it up to the you know I'm not trying to compare it to some you know especially really high you know yeah I'm I'm not expecting it to be. You know, I, I'm, I'm not expecting it to outdo the 90s ones. I'm just expecting it to get closer to those. And I'm expecting it to... Honestly, a lot of it is just that the decisions made were not as... Yeah, it's, it's not necessarily a budgetary issue as much as just the decisions made. The, the you know, it's fine that it gives you, you know, a pistol and shotgun rather than necessarily like, you know, I'm not saying you have to put in like a fully automatic nail gun, I'm saying when you're invoking those games you have to get, you have to do more to be really interesting, I mean the the pistol and the shotgun are so so basic and just yeah, not not that interesting and yeah, I mean it's that's just a matter of what you draw. You know, the the plasma gun is you know it's one of the more fun weapons and that, you know, I mean, he could have just made that a regular assault rifle, but he didn't and that's what I'm really that's that's what I think is a little underwhelming that you know you could have made the pistol like a really really cool pistol and the same with the shotgun instead of just these really straightforward ones now yeah the the finishers you know four levels for each weapon but they're all very similar they're they're basically a bigger and more damaging projectile for that gun and you know for the sword it's these energy you know they, they look a lot like the, the plasma gun ones and again that's I just think that it would be really interesting if they were more different again I'm, I'm not saying how about just like in in the the Jedi Knight games if you hold down the the Wookiee bowcaster, it fires more than one projectile at the same time. Why not have that as one of the simple finishers for some of the guns? Just you know, it fires like two or three of the same projectile. So in again, instead of just being a, a bigger version, and the higher the level, the bigger the the version is. Yeah. But of course, it is really cool for the the plasma rifle and the rocket launcher. You know, the the rocket gets pretty insane for that. But yeah, and there is a brief power up phase for when you you know yeah when when you between you pressing the button and the finisher launching. And it may also be a slow projectile depending on the gun. And again, that's for, you know, the rocket is very slow. And the plasma gun finisher is also very slow. And you can earn it with any weapon and then use it with 
a different you know one you you just switch weapons you know between you earning it and you firing it you can quickly switch to another weapon and you know when you start to get enough of a chain for a finisher there'll be two bars one for the time that you know the window within which you have to kill another enemy in order to add it to the chain and another bar for how high a finisher or even before you get a finisher how close you are to the level one finisher and some have really some people really hate the system and I would definitely say you you almost don't really need to use it when you're playing the game and it yeah it, it has a number of issues levels aren't really full of enemies you know in to the extent where you can just yeah achieve these kill chains and when they are you know you're yeah you you have that choice do you want to run around trying to squeeze them into this chain or do you just want to try to kill them without taking damage the way you would in doom and there's there are too many items that you're running around picking up for it to be quite that fast you know th this works well for you know score attack and you know the the time attack modes you know you there are so and so many items do you really need to pick all of them up how can you best you know is it is it a good idea to pick all of them up or do you want to you know just bypass some can you complete the level if you don't pick up that armor thing you know that kind of thing but it doesn't really work well for the ranking system and the really the 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 chain could be for every shot that you know that that hits you know i already mentioned earlier that you know it could then you know like instead of just like the the amount of time how about if you miss with a single shot then you lose the the chain you know that that way you're not focusing on trying to kill as many you know because again the weapons are just too weak for that the you know one way to deal with it is when you can just running around with the sword but then how fun is that you're just running around using the same weapon and you gotta watch that same one swing animation waiting for him to slowly swing the sword it just it could be so much more fun you know i mean i recently played for the first time the original shadow warrior game that has a sword too that has a very fast swing and on some enemies when you've done the swing you know in both games you can one hit kill some enemies with the swing in that game when you've done the swing you might see the enemy literally falling apart like you you chop them in half that's awesome and it's much faster swing and it's just yeah i i really think i i think it would be more interesting if the swing was faster and i can understand why you know considering how huge the sword is but still you know there there's internal logic and then there's what makes it more fun and yeah if the swing was slower but it took several hits you know yeah how about if if you want to get a kill you have to swing it three times but it also actually swings three times faster so that yeah you have to stand there for like uh, the half second or so it takes to fully swing if you want to kill but if you just want to wound then you know you swing it real quick then you move on to another enemy or you maybe back away whatever but just yeah and the yeah if it was for every shot that hit and then you know maybe it cuts away completely if you miss maybe you just lose some of it if you miss but or at least that doesn't count or whatever you know for every shot you hit and the the more damage you do with that shot the the more 
increase. And I'm not saying then, you know, obviously then it should rack up much slower than it currently does because the way it currently works is more, you know, it's, it's adjusted by how you actually have to kill enemies in order to, but yeah, if, if it did more, the more damage you do and, or maybe you should only rack up when you do a lot of damage, you know, when you hit and when you do a lot of damage. So you're very careful to run around and do as much damage because you're almost already doing that. You know, then it would complement rather than almost feel extraneous. It, it yeah, you're you're it's a classic first person shooter. You're running around trying to gun them down as fast as you can. So you're using you're trying to use the most powerful gun as long as you have ammo for it, and you're trying to shoot them in the face. You're trying to get up close with a shotgun whatever yeah it would it just feels awkward a lot of the time when you're running around trying to kill and you know yeah you get up close fire the shotgun it still doesn't kill you know it might take three shots to kill even a fairly common enemy and it just yeah it feels you know this is why people are saying it's a chore P part of it at least i figure and another thing is maybe you should earn ammo by shooting so you're not worrying about that when you're chaining you know as, as it is you're worrying about you know picking up items you're worrying about your ammo and your and your health as you're running around trying to gun them down and it just yeah it, it just doesn't work quite as well and the, you know, even even swapping guns can cost you these really valuable seconds. You know, maybe an, another way to do it is if enemies, you know, if if you kill them with one shot most of the time, you know, you do with some of the simpler enemies, some of the minor ones. Maybe if you kill more enemies with a single shot and or the weapons were faster because as it is you're just running around looking for easy to kill enemies in order to chain and it just again I, I don't I don't think this is the case I'm almost certain it's not but it feels like it was a late edition and it it wasn't one that evolved out of what makes sense for the game, but just something that was put in because it seems cool. And yeah, you know, and comparatively, in the House of the Dead, it you know you or you yeah you you get more and more multiplier bonuses the more enemies you kill without missing. That makes sense because in in the House of the Dead Overkill, because right from the first game. Of, you know, right from the very first House of the Dead game, the idea is fire as many shots as you can, in as little time as you can, hit the the most damaging, you know, areas that you can, and don't miss. So the House of the Dead Overkill putting in that multiplier is really just, yeah, that is evolving out of what makes sense for the game, and that's you know, Overkill is much more complex than the first few and that's you know that's not a dig on the first few the first few you know they started out as just these arcade you know yeah literally you'd go to an arcade and you'd you know stand there and play it it's limited how complicated those can be you know and how complicated you want them to be because it's just you know people go up to them you know throw in a coin or two and then you play you want it to be the kind of thing that you can just pick up and play. That was an overkill. You know, you can get that for the Wii. You know, people people are going to play that a bunch. You know, that's yeah. And the yeah, on, honestly, also with the the chaining, you can actually run out of enemies to even use the finisher on. Sometimes even before you get a proper level one finisher, and th this is helped by you being able to the, the moment you earn a finisher and you want to use it, you can just hold down the key, 
and it'll actually although I think the game should make this clear it was it was a pro tip on a loading screen so I didn't realize it at, at first and you know if I had just sped through I mean I made sure to play again these 17 levels and you know 17 you add in the the mod ones which are you know another four you know 21 in addition to the the nine so yeah 30 levels total where you know some people might just play through it once and that's you know eight maybe nine levels you might not get the pro tips that tell you some of these really vital things and yeah but anyway if you hold down the key then you can actually run around with it for a while and the moment then you that you then let go it'll fire immediately you know the the power up was done when you started holding down the key and something that's really cool for this is if you actually pick up a gun that you didn't already you know, you know how the moment you pick up a new gun it might switch to it if it's a bigger better gun in this you can actually you know if you're still holding down the key when you're picking up the new gun it'll switch to the new gun without it firing off the finisher so that's really great oh, unfortunately you can't do that if you're manually switching between guns again for for you to use a finisher with a different gun than you earned it with you have to switch the gun before you press the you know it's it's the alternate fire key it's what you usually use as an alternate fire key and yeah the the basic the yeah what what you're typically typically experiencing in the game is you walk into an open room and you kill the enemies as fast as you can the level design is hardly simplistic the the there's a there's high attention to detail and layout in these increasingly large labyrinthian levels with you know perfectly placed enemies and items and the the you know you're you're running through the this big city and you know there are maybe skyscrapers off in the horizon and you know long drops and such meanwhile you are running through like disposal facilities to you know taking a a shortcut hoping that there you know you won't run into too much of the invading force but there are still of course plenty of enemies and you know this this helps explain why there are these deadly crushing plates although far too few of them you know toxic waste summon these barrels that are then explosive the the lava and like the, the spiky balls those I can't explain unfortunately because you are mostly in these disposal facilities and such the levels just end up kind of uninteresting you know and it's it's for it's difficult to make that kind of you know these kinds of areas all that interesting meanwhile you spend a bunch of you know Jedi Knight to Jedi Outcast running through the the less you know the less used and like you know engineering rooms and such of you know remnant imperial forces you know they're they're like bases or ships and such and that's a ton of fun those are you know really memorable levels so yeah and that again that's where I'm really glad that the that there are a bunch of workshop levels because those are far more interesting and a bunch of them have like the open sky so you know you you're outside and you're in far more open areas and just yeah they they really take far more advantage of what the engine can do and yeah i mean i hope if if there's like a sequel for this or something i hope that he the I, I'm not entirely sure if it really is just 
one person, but yeah, that's you know the the team, the the indie team utilizes the the well, yeah, probably a new engine, but yeah, that they make the levels more, you know, more different areas and more varied and, and such. Now, a level will typically be a series of rooms of varying size, and you'll be activating switches to proceed. You know, there are jump plates, traps, you know, doors and other blockades from that, you know, you have to maybe find, you know, go to a certain area, maybe there's a switch, and then that door will then open or the like. And there will typically be one big boss to a level. And you can tell the overall levels apart. You know, yeah, If when whenever I played, I could always tell that, you know, and, and some of them are actually continuations. I, I believe there's like two disposal facilities and two of something, two like labs maybe. And, you know, so they're... they're the same overall building, but you can still tell which one you're in. Now, the the design is fairly similar to Doom, with you know breakable crates. You know, some will have you know traps, and there there are secret areas to find and such. Actually, come to think of it, did Doom have breakable crates, or was that later? A anyway, there are breakable crates in this. Now, some have pointed out that the level design makes it less fun, and the, the levels really aren't that interesting. They do get repetitive, and, you know, some have found that they got lost. You know, it was easy to get lost because the rooms look like other rooms in the same level, and... It really needs like an in, you know, in level map. Personally, I found that with how short they, you know, again, they get labyrinthine, but they're they're short, you know, compared to like, I'm not sure I can think of one off the top of my head, but there are games. It's Jedi Knight One has huge levels, you know, even just getting from point A to point B in a level can take a while, you know, even if you're moving very fast. And in this, they just, you know, I don't I don't have a count. I haven't really timed how long a level takes in that. But yeah, they you know they're they're huge. And in this, yeah, they get bigger and bigger, but you're always running. You're moving very fast pretty much all the time. I found that, you know, you know, go by where you left corpses behind and Overall, I found it relatively intuitive. I mean, if you've played a bunch of 90s, you know, first-person shooters, I, you know, I don't know what the, you know, possibly people who haven't really played those are having more trouble. And, you know, I'm not saying that they're not good at it or that, like, I'm, I just or saying that the levels aren't actually easy to get lost in. I just, I think that it really depends on, yeah, how the the level of experience you have with these 90s first-person shooters. Yeah, I honestly, as far as complex level design goes, and this is complex level design, I found this you know, I had a very easy time finding my way. I never really got lost. I, you know, I would sometimes briefly wonder where I was supposed to go, but I would quickly find out. I actually have a very bad sense of direction, and I get lost in most games I play, and in this, it hardly ever, you know, yeah, it didn't happen. You know, I'm, I'm replaying Silent Hill 1 currently, and, you know, that is a, a game that has you know, a map, and it's also, you know, it's it's not a first-person perspective game and such, but I am constantly checking the map in it, and I, you know, it, whenever you're in an area that doesn't have a map, you know, th those tend to be very small, so it's not too hard to find your way, but I still, you know, 
yeah, the, the moment that I can actually check the map, and I'll check it a bunch. It's much more, yeah. And I found that the mod levels and such were quite intuitive as well. Now, the... The, the levels really should be more refined and more unique in geometry and you know design and this same fellow reviewer points out that in dooms no two rooms look alike and they all have personality and architecture that really helps you know where you are in it and you know having just replayed the the entire first campaign of Doom in Rack, I can quite agree. I, Yeah, I mean, I haven't played this in years. I have not played Doom 1. I mean, back then, I played it a million times. Again, there wasn't necessarily that many games to play, and first-person shooters is something I've always been able to do, because you point and you shoot, and then you find your way, and you maybe pick up stuff, and you maybe figure out how to deal with a boss, that's it. You know, there are no skill points to earn or decide how to assign. There's no, like, puzzles. There, you know, nothing like that. Just straightforward, you know. I used to be terrible at stealth, even, and that, you know. It turned out I really just needed to get a little more experience with it, so I... Yeah. Anyway, yeah. It's it's very true about, you know, Doom's level design, and, yeah, again, overall, you probably should just play one of those, but this is still, you know, this does have some to offer, and there's a, especially when you get into the mods, there's a lot of fun to be had here. Now, all of the mods took me four hours. You know, I played each once just for the sake of the review and just to see how long, you know, yeah. It took me four hours to play through all of them. And, yeah, you know, they're most, yeah, most of them are rather replayable. So, yeah, but for sure, if it's not something you really see yourself replaying a lot, it's probably not really for you. It's it's too short, and there's not quite enough, you know, even with, you know, I mentioned, I mean, we are talking like 50 different, you know, almost 50 different, like, mods and, and such. It's still, you know, and, and note that, you know, when you're, like, going through the, the workshop, menus and just picking ones to download. Some of those do have more than one mod in them. I think actually that's where like the number 23 is probably based on that is a, such a terrible movie with such a BS cop-out ending and it's just freaking Joel Schumacher. Anyway, yes, where I got to counting up to 23 was probably going through the menus of the workshop and then when I went into the game and saw them all there were you know there were actually 31 on there so 31 separate ones total and yeah as such almost 50 it still you know it took me four hours to try out everything at least once to play through every single level at least once yeah it's it's just not enough if you if you don't really see you yourself replaying it a bunch and yeah please comment thumbs up and subscribe for more content